We're visiting with Dr. Jorn Dyerberg, and we're talking about good fats, bad fats, for those of us who don't know all the terms. But mm -hmm. omega-3s are getting a lot of attention, and most of us are familiar with that now. Mm -hmm. Dr. Dyerberg, what are some of the physiological effects of taking the omega-3s? When we're talking about taking omega-3s and physiological beneficial facts, we're talking about two fatty acids, EPA and DHA. And the research has been going on on these for uh, a couple of decades, and, and we know a lot of, uh, of the biochemistry today, but not everything. Let's start with EPA. It's, it's a precursor. I mean, it, from that fatty acid, you can make prostaglandins. And prostaglandins influences cell-to-cell -cell communication. And it seems uh, that adding more EPA to our system influences this balance of prostaglandins in a favorable way. One example is that it lowers the tendency to blood clotting. It lowers inflammatory responses. All right. And inflammatory responses can be good if you get a bacteria in, but mm -hmm. it can be bad if it's in rheumatoid arthritis, in skin disorders, in intestinal inflammation, and so on. And if you increase the EPA intake, you dampen this inflammatory response, and you can get improvement in rheumatoid arthritis symptoms and in skin disorders and things like that. The DHA has another the other mm -hmm. long chain has a lot of other function. It's built in, like EPA, into every cell membrane, but some organs are especially dependent on a high amount of DHA, and that goes for our eyes, our vision. Mm -hmm. And there have been studies in, uh, experimental studies in, in animals showing that you can have a lower visual function if you feed the mothers and the puppies a low DHA content. But maybe even more essential is our brains. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to use mine now, and hopefully there's <laughs> DHA enough up there to, to do the work. But in our brains, there's a lot of fatty acids. And oh. it's, it's, how, it's, it's a lot of fatty acids. And half of it is DHA, and it has an essential function in, in the nervous system. And it has now been found in, in several studies that, for example, the proneness to get dementia mm -hmm. seems to be influenced by a low intake of DHA. The famous American Framingham study quite yes. recently came up with a summary of their findings, and they found that Persons who had eaten uh, 180 milligrams of DHA per day, mm -hmm. which is not that much, uh, over a period of nine years, had nearly half, 47%, lower risk of having dementia. That's very significant. Oh, that's enormous significant. It's not an intervention trial. It's not so that they have given to half of their population. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an observational trial, and it has not the same solidity and evidence, but it's very indicative that there's something, and other studies around the world come up with nearly the same results. A, a big study in, in the Netherlands, the Rotterdam study, come up with nearly the same results of fish eaters versus non-fish eaters and the risk of dementia. And you should remember that dementia is a huge burden, not only on the person, on mm -hmm. the family, but also on the society. It, it's a major burden. And if we go to the other end of our life, the newborns, Mm -hmm. and their sm the smartness of their brains. Uh, there's been a Norwegian study giving to mothers uh, the last three months before giving birth and the first three months after while lactating, giving breast to their babies, either some corn oil or some uh -huh. cod liver oil, because in Norway you take tarn or cod liver oil, right. like in Denmark, rich in DHA and EPA. And uh, then they uh, in, uh, examined the, the kids at the age of four and found that their IQs in the cod liver oil group were, was higher than in the control group. Not mm -hmm. dramatically, but mm -hmm. significantly. Uh, the numbers were actually 106 in the cod liver oil and 102 in the non-cod liver. And, uh, well, non 102 is okay, but uh, I would rather have 106 than two. 
So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's okay. as simple as that. So it builds into your brain. Uh, the newborn builds uh, 30, 35, 40 milligrams in his or her brain per week, per week during the first three years. It's, it's an essential amount of DHA you build into your brains. And maybe you should keep that up and mm -hmm. the level high. <laughs> so as a nutritionist, I would say uh, a high consumption of fatty fish. And if you can't do that, you have to do it in another way. Well, thank you for that explanation. Thank you.